The ketogenic diet may help you burn fat from carbohydrates two times more than ordinary. That is insane. Make no mistake, the ketogenic diet is notorious for improving the function of what is called brown fat. Brown fat takes energy that we consume and dissipates it as heat. It's relatively old science that we know that it does that. However, there's some recent evidence that demonstrates the ketogenic diet can not only help improve how much energy is dissipated as heat, but may help us use carbs even better as heat. Hey, after this video, if you're doing keto and you like bread, speaking of carbs, check out Unbun Foods down below in the description. They are available at a lot of different whole food stores, but you can also get them online through the link down below and save a few bucks. So if you use that code, you can get some ketogenic friendly bread, but this isn't just ordinary bread. They have, first of all, bread, bagels, tortillas, which are my personal favorite, but they're utilizing really good ingredients. We're talking like psyllium, we're talking some flax, we're talking almond flour, we're not talking random like wheat gluten gluten and weird hydrogenated things that you see in a lot of keto breads. If I'm standing behind it, it's legit. So there's a link down below to check out Unbun and you can use that code to try them out or you can go find them at Whole Foods and support them there. But they're a big supporter of this channel. I work with them and help them on formulation, help them with a lot of things. So they are a great group of people and their link is down below. It's called Unbun. You've got to try some keto bread. There was a study that was published in IUBMB Life not that long ago that took a look at uh, what happens like to our brown adipose tissue on a ketogenic diet. Now, it talked about a lot of the things we already know. Like on a ketogenic diet, we have an increase in mitochondrial density within the brown fat. And just to back up for a second, brown fat is not bad fat. I know it sounds like it might be bad because it's fat, but brown fat is metabolically active fat metabolically active in the sense that it takes energy and it turns it into heat. So we want brown fat. Okay, we want more brown fat than we do white fat. So we know that the ketogenic diet, and this study kind of reaffirms it, that improves the function of brown fat. It makes the fat that turns calories into heat even better at turning calories into heat. But what this study also found was that when subjects that were doing a ketogenic diet went back onto carbohydrates, and then still had a little bit of some ketone esters coming in through supplemental form, they found that that ingestion of carbohydrates would 2x the glucose uptake of the brown adipose tissue. What does this mean? It means that if you're doing a ketogenic diet and your ketone levels remain moderately high, or just there, present, and you congest some carbohydrates, a good portion of those carbohydrates will go to the brown fat and actually stimulate the creation of heat. Have you ever noticed that when you're doing strict keto and then you have a cheat meal, all of a sudden you start sweating and your body heat goes up? Well, that's because the brown adipose tissue is getting highly activated and it can take those carbohydrates and suck them up and use them better for heat. So this is a solid argument for the cyclical ketogenic diet, okay, which I'm a big proponent of, where you go a period of time three, four months doing the ketogenic diet, and then maybe take a month off and allow your body to utilize carbohydrates. Now, there's a multitude of reasons for that. Glucose tolerance, uh, different anaerobic performance, uh, serotonin uptake, tryptophan, all of that stuff, just giving yourself a little break and then going back for three or four months, saying largely ketogenic as the main general rule, but having these periods of carb implementation. Now, you might be wondering, because this study was talking about the co-ingestion, of carbohydrates along with exogenous ketones. Do you need to be taking in exogenous ketones during this time? The answer is not necessarily, okay? If you have the upregulation of these different things like PPAR alpha, the upregulation of uncoupling proteins, those effects will probably stay elevated for a couple of weeks before your body starts to adapt to carbohydrates again. So that means that you have this sweet spot of about two, three weeks after coming off of a ketogenic diet where carbohydrates are probably going to get dissipated as heat at least a lot more than they normally would. Normally, if we weren't doing keto, we'd consume carbohydrates, our cells would take them up, use them as energy, and what we don't use goes through de novo lipogenesis and turns to fat. But what if, potentially, hypothetically, based upon some of this research, some of those carbohydrates didn't just get wasted, but they got wasted as heat because you sweated more or because you just created more heat. 
that's a pretty awesome process. And the way that that works is simple. Okay, within your mitochondria, we have this energy process that's occurring via a hydrogen turbine. I'm just going to abbreviate it here. Basically, we have a little turbine that spins that creates energy, just like a windmill. Uncoupling proteins that are created during a ketogenic diet or expressed more during a ketogenic diet sit right by that turbine and hijack some of that energy that's being created. They're like, hey, I want some of that. Imagine just like, you know, a robber sitting on a you know, windmill and he's just sitting there like taking all the energy for his own Tesla. Whereas the rest of the energy that was supposed to go to the community isn't going there because he's taking it. Okay, well, that's exactly what's happening except minus the whole Tesla part. So with that in mind, that whole application, that process stays elevated for a couple of weeks. Now, you could potentially elevate it even more by co-ingesting exogenous ketones during your you know, carb cycling time. But then again, you have to ask yourself the question, the body is preferentially going to use what it wants to use. And if you're fat adapted and you continue ingesting ketones during your carb time, maybe you're not going to utilize the carbs in the way that you really should. Okay, you're not giving your body the chance or the cells the chance to develop glucose tolerance. So I'm not negating the use of exogenous ketones, just saying maybe use them moderately during your carb phase and kind of experiment with it. The point is, this is another argument for going three or four months on keto, maybe even five months, and then a month off. Three, four, five months, a month off. You will reap the benefit of the ketogenic diet long after you stop a ketogenic diet, at least as it pertains to uncoupling proteins. So I know this was a little bit complicated, but it's just to further the argument here. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.